what? Man, it's a muggy one here today, but it's getting pretty close to the season in Texas, and there's one thing that I really, really wanted to try out this summer uh, before the season to make sure I knew how things were going to pan out if I got into that situation. You know, bow hunting is a lot like a lot of things. Um, it's learned through the school of hard knocks. Um, my first archery buck, I was sitting in the woods, I was 16, I had an old hand-me-down bow and didn't know a lot about bow hunting. Uh, my dad had taught me a few things. So I'm sitting in a tree alone and we have a, a spike roll in our county and uh, I had a three point coming in. So he had one unbranched antler, so he's legal. And he starts coming in right before dark, man, everything's perfect, my heart starts beating. He's coming right to my tree and he ends up coming right to my tree basically. He's five yards um, whenever he gets broadside to me. And so I draw back, he doesn't see me. I take aim, put it right where it needs to be, shoot, and I'm surprised, but it's high. And so we track the deer, we found one little bitty spot of blood and that was it uh, the next day. And so it was really kind of crushing, but it was a good way to learn the lesson of shooting at close range. Now, since then, I haven't really had the opportunity to shoot at a deer that was any closer than 15 yards. So I wanted to set everything up and try out today shooting at close range at my target to see where everything was hitting and make sure that I'm on in case this year a buck wants to come in right to my tree. So I'm gonna shoot a few arrows and see if I can relay anything that I learned along the way. So several years later, looking at instances on YouTube from other people and on some of the social media platforms, I've realized that that deer with that high dead zone hit probably survived just fine, didn't have any problems getting through the season. But I did learn one super important lesson through that experience, other than being crushed and realizing how much I really wanted to shoot a deer with a bow, I realized that at close range, you have to bend at the waist to get the arrow to hit where you want it to. By not bending at the waist and using my shoulders as the pivot point, I changed a lot of my knocking points, therefore changing the point of impact of the arrow. So I found that the best way to keep your knocking points the same is to draw just like you shoot in the yard, straight out. And you might have to keep an eye down on that deer to make sure he doesn't look up at you or she doesn't look up at you and see you moving around while you're getting ready to draw or while you're in the drawing process. Once you get that bow all the way back and anchored, tilt to the waist until your sight profile comes down to the point of impact that you would like. One other thing I notice is that when you're shooting at close range, your bow, if you're shooting correctly, wants to fall straight out of your hand to the ground. So therefore, this wrist strap is essential to keeping your good form as you attempt that close range shot and also keeping your bow from falling out of your hand and smashing all over the ground. After shooting a few arrows, I feel like there's a great reason for me to run in the summers because if I had too big a gut, it would change my knocking points. I feel like bending over. I couldn't get bent over as far as I needed on this four yard shot right here. Another thing I noticed is that the point of impact seems to be most accurate when I'm using my 30 yard pin at this distance. And I think that may be due to gravity, but I'm not 100% sure, but it's a good thing to know. It's good that I practiced this before the season. I've watched several guys shoot shots like this on YouTube and on TV and that kind of thing. And I feel like that it's very difficult to get a double lung in this situation. Um, depends on the angle of the animal, but if he's coming in or facing away, it's obviously very difficult to do. So you just kind of have to judge what you want to do in that situation. It's hard to let a big buck walk, but you might let him get out to 15 or 20 yards if you've got some shooting lanes and then maybe give him a, a quiet grunt stop so that he kind of turns his body a little bit and looks back towards you, therefore giving you a quartering away shot. I hope these tips were helpful and this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember, this is your element. Live in it. Mm -hmm.